annual meetings of the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund in Washington, D.C. will no doubt grab a lot of headlines, or at least as they both stretch from the 9th to the 15th of October. Some investors will find the IMF's latest biannual World Economic Outlook document extremely useful for its data and thematic studies. Others will find the macroeconomics interesting, but wonder what the forecast can be used for from an investment's perspective. And others will just dismiss the whole week as the work of prolix windbags. Only you can know which camp you're in. More tangibly, the US Bureau of Labor Statistics will publish the latest American inflation figures in this coming week. Investors, economists and central bankers will get to see the latest producer price or factory gate or PPI inflation reading on Wednesday the 11th of October and the consumer price index or CPI reading on the 12th. In theory, the PPI reading should give us a feel for what's coming down the pipe and leading into CPI further down the road, even allowing for how inflation now seems to be more entrenched in services and wages than it does in manufactured goods. In this respect, the news has been pretty encouraging, at least until very recently. The last US PPI inflation reading for August was just 1.6% year-on-year, a fraction higher than the previous two months. Although, that, frankly, that little increase really isn't what the US Federal Reserve wants to see. And the last CPI reading also showed some minor acceleration to 3.7% from 3.2% in July. Now, that's still a big improvement on 2022's peak of 9%, but it's still nearly twice the Fed's 2% target. The US Central Bank has held the 5.5% Federal Reserve base rate at its last monetary policy meeting, but it's continued to talk a tough game and threaten to hold rates higher for longer. As a result, markets are now pressing in just one or two cuts for the 2024 at the most, and only then towards the back end of the year. That Fed rhetoric has had stock and bond markets on edge. US Treasury yields have shot higher and stock markets have paddled sideways. Although a look at the Fed funds rate back to 1971 shows that the US Central Bank has never, ever held rates at their peak for very long. Either the economy's buckled under the weight of more expensive money, or the stock market's done so, or both. So let's see what happens this time around. From a bottom-up perspective, there's a fairly select state uh, slate of scheduled corporate announcements for the coming week, including an analyst meeting at one FTSE 100 firm. Companies which, which may be worth of your further research include the following, although note some of these dates could yet be subject to change. After a very quiet Monday, we've got Robert Walters and YouGov on Tuesday the 10th. Page Group, Kinetic, Sanderson Design and Marston's on the 11th. A Seven Trent Analysts meeting, Hayes, Sabre Insurance, Norcross, Mighty and N. Brown on the 12th. And Ashmore on Friday the 13th of October, lucky them. However, the company which could cause the biggest fuss in the week ahead is EasyJet. The airline and FTSE 250 index member is due to release a full-year trading update on Thursday the 12th of October for the year that ended in September. Now, the shares are up by nearly 50% over the past year, and that's after a pullback since early summer. That loss of altitude may be due to the resurgence in oil prices, since fuel is a key input cost, and higher energy prices could also crimp consumer spending on holidays. But nevertheless, that fall does come despite an upbeat third quarter trading update from your chief executive Lohan Youngrun back in June, when he revealed the airline had made a bumper profit before interest and tax of £203 million against the loss in the equivalent period in 2022 held by profit from EasyJet holidays. Flown 23.5 million passengers with a 90% load factor in that three month period generated a 28% increase in ancillary revenues to boost total revenue per seat by 23%, reduced flight disruption, and paid down debt. Mr. Lundgren also offered some guidance for the fourth quarter that we're about to see now. Notably that, revenue per seat would rise by more than 10% year-on-year, cost per seat would be broadly flat, and EasyJet holidays would make another £50 million in profit. Add all of that lot together... And analysts will be benchmarking this trading update against their full year estimates for fiscal 2023. They are looking for annual sales of £8.2 billion, up 42% year on year, and a pre tax profit of £450 million against last year's £208 million loss. Of just as much interest will be any profit forecast for the 12 months of September 2024, the year that's just begun, should Mr. Lundgren feel able to give one and be brave if he did although we may prefer to wait until the actual full year results in late November for that. 
The current analyst's consensus forecast is looking for another increase in pre-tax profit to £552 million. That would still be below 2015's all-time high, by the way, of £686 million, and that may be why the shares are still well below the peak in the shares seen back then. Mr Lundgren's already given a few bits and pieces of guidance for Q1 2024, so watch out if any of these change. Capacity up more than 15% year-on-year, the load factor to rise year-on-year, Cost per seat to decline, excluding fuel. Note that at the third quarter stage, EasyJet had hedged 58% of its fuel needs for the first half of the new fiscal year, 29% for the second. A further sign of management's confidence in the recovery, or lack of it, will be any changes to its aircraft purchasing plans. EasyJet has placed orders for 163 new planes from Airbus out to 2028, with eight due to arrive in fiscal 2023, 18 in 24, 27 in 25, and 28 in 2026, with the result that the fleet will grow to a maximum of 380 aircraft by 2026, though that could go as low as 299 if EasyJet lets some lapses leap, some leases lapse. Now, to cover all of those purchases, as well as leases and maintenance payments, capital expenditure is expected to be in the £1 billion range for the year that's just finished, £1.5 billion in 24, £1.7 to £1.8 billion, in 25 and 26. Hope that you and your families are all keeping well and in good spirits. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.